We are standing by at this hour for the first White House briefing since the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan. We're going to take you there as soon as it begins. But first, let's turn to what this all means for the future of women in that country. President Biden says the U.S. will continue to stand up for basic human rights. But the Taliban is known for its brutality and intolerance towards women. Former U.S. UN ambassador to a uh, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, joins us now. Ambassador, wonderful to have you on the program this afternoon. First and foremost, your first reaction to the fall of Afghanistan and notably what this means for the women in that country. Welcome. Thank you, Sandra. You know, it didn't have to be this way. That's the first thought I have is it didn't have to be this way. In just a few hours, literally, Biden destroyed the progress, the relationships, and everything we had done the last 20 years in Afghanistan. And I think about this from the standpoint of I'm the wife of a combat veteran that served in Afghanistan. All of our military families are very distraught at what we've watched happen and how we basically were run out of town. As a governor who sent units to Afghanistan, promising that we would always hold them up as heroes, that we would always respect them and always have our respect as a country there for them. And I think about how they're let down. I think about as ambassador, when I actually went and visited Afghanistan, and the women and girls that I met with, the women who were holding positions in government, the girls who were going to school, and now they're going to go back to being sex slaves hidden in their homes. I mean, this is horrible. This could not have gone any worse. And it's, you know, Biden's trying to make this about what his options were. You know what? He didn't have to have it this way. It's not always what we do, it's how we do it. And he failed miserably. He humiliated America and the and uh, the world sees us as less safe right now. And that's all because of Biden. It's tragic. And we know the Taliban has announced this amnesty, urging women to join the government there. A Taliban spokesperson just held a press briefing a short time ago saying our women are Muslim. They are also uh, they will also be happy to live within the framework of the Sharia. Our women have rights and they will be able to benefit from those rights. They have right to participate in education, health and other areas. Obviously, high skepticism hearing those words in that country. These are Afghan women, Ambassador, protesting outside of the White House, sounding off on the way this withdrawal played out. Listen. Our girls, you know, the, the young girls who haven't seen Taliban, like girls who are under 20 don't know what life is like under Taliban. Their lives are all destroyed. They're all destroyed. We're all incredibly disappointed in uh, President Biden and the administration for pulling out all the troops from Afghanistan literally overnight. This after an Afghan female journalist in the Pentagon briefing yesterday confronted the Pentagon leaders saying everybody is upset especially women. Ambassador, what does this mean for the women left behind in that country? It's insulting. It's insulting that Biden in a speech could talk about human rights, knowing what he did to the Afghan people. You know, here everybody's talked about the fact that the Afghan military should have stood up for themselves. Has anybody thought about the fact that these men and women stood shoulder to shoulder with our soldiers? My husband's a part of no, um, no one left behind. We helped get his translators back to America. These people sacrificed everything because they trusted us. They trusted that we would do right by them. They trusted that we would have their backs. There's nothing wrong with us drawing down military. We had 2,500 people. But the idea that we left those women, that we left those girls, that we left those interpreters, that we left those people, what is wrong with America? What is happening to us? We saw President Obama go and hit our ally Israel by leading the charge to humiliate them at the UN. Now we're seeing President Biden go and literally leave the allies that kept our soldiers safe on the ground. You saw what happened in the airport. What you didn't see is what was outside of the camera. There were thousands of people at the fence begging to get there, and the Taliban was around that perimeter ready to kill them. That's what we left. That's what you did to the military families. That's what they have to think about now is after all of this sacrifice, after 20 years of this, you left those women, you left those girls, you left those Afghan friends of ours, and you allow now on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, 
you're going to have an Af you're going to have a Taliban flag flying above that country. The Taliban that gave Al Qaeda safe harbor after they killed 3,000 Americans. It's an insult, and it's absolutely a humiliation for our country. And I am terribly ashamed of what President Biden has done. And Ambassador, I know you have you've paid many visits there, and you mentioned your husband uh, who served on active duty. Uh, there. This is an incredibly personal situation for you as well. You sounded off on Twitter in many ways, one of which you said Biden's trying to distract and imply his option was to either send more troops or end a war. That wasn't the case, you say. It has always been about protecting America. This exit from Afghanistan and the way it was done was pathetic. He gave the terrorists a win and he knows it. He gave that speech yesterday, returned to Camp David. We are now left wondering uh, how safe an evacuation, how thorough of an evacuation we will see of the people there, uh, Ambassador Haley. We have seen bipartisan outrage as a reaction to what the president has carried out here. What do you want to see as far as consequences or accountability for this president? You've already got a Democrat in the Senate, uh, the head of the Armed Services Committee, the chairman, who's saying that he will ask for a hearing uh, going forward to ask how the president ultimately came this to, to this decision. We know the military advisors were advising against this approach. I mean, this was a dereliction of duty. What you're going to see is, I mean, the administration owes us answers, but it's not even that. You can have a bunch of congressmen ask for answers. Answer the military families. Answer the sacrifices that they had. Answer the military veterans who are now looking, wondering what was all of this for? Didn't their sacrifice mean anything? These men and women gave up everything to protect us here at home because they knew what the Taliban was capable of. They knew what Al Qaeda did to those 3,000 Americans. And for 20 years, they fought, sacrificed, and served with the promise that America was going to fight and do the right thing. Do the right thing. We didn't do the right thing. President Biden and Kamala Harris need to answer for that. How will they ever look another world leader in the face after what happened? I can tell you this. Taiwan is feeling less safe today and China's feeling emboldened. Ukraine is feeling less safe and Russia's feeling emboldened. Iran is feeling and celebrating right now. And on the Afghan-Pakistani border where all of those terrorist organizations stand, they are all plotting now. And you know what they're plotting? They're singing the same mantra they've always said, which is death to America. That that's what we're dealing with now. President Biden and Kamala Harris owe us answers. This was wrong. It was a slap in the face to every military family. It was a slap in the face to every American. And the Afghan people deserved better. And now they're on a mission to secure that airfield, allowing uh, continued evacuations from there. We pray for these people. Ambassador Haley, we appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you.